And if someone would like to start, uh, we can get underway. I'll start us off, Jeremy. Uh, JB Ricks here from Spectrum News One. Appreciate you taking out the time. Uh, just your immediate thoughts about the uh, acquisition of uh, CJ Henderson on the defensive side of the ball and the adjustments that you know you guys will have to make to to to, to keep this thing rolling the way you guys have it as being the top ranked defense in the in the league. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for him to get here. I'm excited to meet him, start working with him. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a weekly process. We start over each week. This is a new week, so just building it back up. All right, let's go to Will Palachi. I know that uh, you're not necessarily wanting to give up trade secrets, Jeremy, but but I guess how will you guys adjust without having Justin here at least the next week or two? Yeah, we, we, we've got depth at the, in the safety room. We've got guys who can play, so they just got to come up, and uh, we trust that they'll come in and make plays and, and, and play all out with the opportunities that they get. And I asked this, too, of Jermaine. Just you guys have set a pretty lofty standard through the first three weeks. Uh, what adjustments do you make and how difficult will it be to try and maintain that standard uh, that you set here over the first three weeks on the defensive side? Yeah, the standard remains a standard. That, that's, whoever's on the field, it's always going to be the same standard. So, um, you know, guys are going to have to step in and step up. And But like I said, the standard is a standard. We all believe that. We all know that. And that's what we're going to continue to hold ourselves to. Right, let's go to Jonathan Alexander, followed by Darren Gant. Hey, Jeremy, hope you're doing well. Uh, I'm, I'm curious, uh, what, what do you think has worked well for you all that has allowed you all to be successful so far? And um, at what point did you all know that, or what point did you know that you all had potential to be good defense? Uh, one thing that our defense is doing really well is getting teams to third and long. So winning first and second down, uh, starting the series off well. That way, I mean, when it is third and long, it's hard for offense to call plays and convert on that. Uh, but, you know, defensively, we, we believe we could be good back in back in the spring, back in OTAs. And that, that's something we just kind of talked about and, and worked towards ever since then. Jeremy, how complicated is the communication part of your job when it's a different cast? I mean, Miles in there and then he's gone, JC gone, now Justin's out. How, how difficult is that part of your job? Uh, it's not it's not any more difficult at all. We've got I mean, we, I've, we've all been out on the field at the same time. Uh, we're all in the same meetings. We all get the same coaching. So uh, who's who, who's ever is in? I mean, they're expected to know the terminology and, and knows what's expected of them on the field. So, uh, you know, my, my calls are, are going to be the same. I'm, I'm still going to communicate the same way. I still got to get the call across and make sure that they get it from me. Is there an element with you because you're still, you know, another three games into play in safety again, not having Justin there next to you? Does that take away a little bit of the security for you? Uh, I mean, not necessarily. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say necessarily. Um, like I said, I, I trust the guys who, who we have in the room. Um, you know, I, I take it upon myself to to know where I'm supposed to be, what I'm supposed to be doing. So. Uh, um, not necessarily security, but Justin is definitely an asset that we have on our defense. All right, let's go to Joe Person, followed by David Newton. Jeremy, I know it's only been three games, but how would you assess uh, the move to safety? Uh, I feel it's, it's been pretty well. Um, I'm still able to, you know, move around the defense and, and play certain different positions and things like that. So, uh, but as a whole, I mean, we're, We've been winning football games, so I can't really complain about that. Is there part of you that feels like you're still sort of learning on the run and, and not, you know, quite to, to where you'll be maybe in another four four weeks or so? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'll continue to get better each week, uh, continue to make strides. So uh, I'm definitely not at the spot where I want to be, but I know I'm going in the right direction. Okay. Any uh, certain plays? where that sort of shows up or where you kind of feel like, okay, that that's still a bit of an issue, but I know I'm getting there. Yeah, I mean, there's certain things you go back and watch the film that you want to get corrected. So there's definitely those things, yeah. Hey, Jeremy, David Newton here from ESPN.com. Wanted to ask you, and I know Phil Snow's done a, a, make a remarkable job of adjusting whatever you guys had to do to adjust to what players he has. Mm -hmm. How did he address you guys today uh, as far as making the adjustments you're going to make without JC and Justin. Yeah, I mean, the, the biggest thing he said is, 
guys have to step up um, and he trusts the guys that we have in our in our defensive back room and, and defense in general to step up and, and make plays. And I also was curious, we were talking to Matt earlier today and we're, he was talking about the move for C.J. Henderson was not just short term, it's long term. So potentially down the road, you'll have, you know, J.C. and him and, and Dante, if he's resigned, then you, I mean, does that remind you of anything you've seen in the past? I mean, I know Scott Fitter was around with the Legion of Boom. Do you remember them and what you first thought of them? Yeah, yeah, of course. I remember everybody remembers them. So uh, probably the most dominant defensive back group, you know, in football. Um, but, you know, we, we have our own our own thing going on here in Carolina uh, that, we're, that we're trying to build. So I'm excited to, for, C, for CJ to get here and JC to get healthy. And um, But, you know, right right now it's just it's, it's Dallas Cowboys. Jeremy, when you guys see that trade come through and you see that kind of that notification or however you find out, what's it like amongst the team or whoever you're with? You guys have a text chain that you guys are like, oh, oh, look at this. And, you know, how do you guys find out what's it like? Yeah, Ro, Ro reached out to a couple of us. Um, that's how I found out about it. And then um, that was this morning. And then guys kind of like talk about it a little bit. It starts to spread real quick. So you look on social media, you see it, you see it all. So. Uh, it's hard not to not to know about it. I know you lose Dan, and that aside, is it exciting when you get a, a piece like CJ in, and it's a big trade? It's not you know, it's not a player to be named later, or like a seventh round draft pick or something like that. Yeah, like I said, I'm I'm excited to meet CJ. Uh, he was some he came in with my class, so he's somebody I, I followed uh, just as another defensive back coming in through the draft. So um, I know he's got a good game. I, I can't wait to work with him. Thanks, man. Right, let's go Scott Fowler, followed by Mike Solarte. Jeremy, uh, speaking of the Cowboys, um, most people have an opinion on them, love them or hate them. I wondered growing up which one of those you were. And also, will you watch the game live tonight? Yeah, I'll definitely be watching the game um, tonight. Uh, we play the Eagles a week after we play Dallas, so we kind of get two for one there. Um, but growing up, I wasn't, I wasn't really a Cowboys hater or a lover. I was a big Colts fan, so they didn't really affect what I had going on in Indy. Thanks. They're kind of following up on that, Jeremy. Mike Solarte, Spectrum News One. Uh, what have you? I mean, when you think of the Cowboys and their offense, is it Dak? Is it Zeke? Is it their receivers? I mean, what are you, what what really signifies their offense to you? And and what do you see from them on what whatever film you've seen so far? Yeah, I mean, every time you see the, the Dallas Cowboys, I think I think Dak Prescott. I mean, he's a guy who their offense goes through, and he's a quarterback. Um, you know, they got really good receivers: Mark Cooper, uh, C.D. Lamb. They got Ezekiel Elliott. They got Tony Pollard. So, they, I mean, they've got guys. They've got weapons on their offense. A great offensive line. So, uh, they're a high-powered offense. But I mean, it starts with Dak. Does Does Zeke kind of have some Alvin Kamara traits as well? Because it seems like he's a guy that's that can be difficult to bring down if he gets to that second level. Yeah, and he can also do a lot of things. He'll, he'll catch the ball, too. Uh, he'll line up outside. Um, he'll do a lot of different things with him. All right, we'll finish up with Darren Gant. Jeremy, when you watch a game on TV, because that view is so different than the film you ordinarily watch, is it frustrating for you sometimes to, to watch it that way? Uh, a little bit. I mean, I, no, I, I actually wouldn't. I wouldn't say frustrating. Um, I mean, I know what I'm getting myself into. It's just watching a regular football game. And then we, we got the all 22 copy, too. So if there's something I really need to see, you know, I'm always going to watch that as well. What percentage of the time do you catch yourself thinking, no, show me the whole thing. Let me see. You know, let me see this when you're yeah. on TV. No, a lot of times I'll be watching, you know, maybe where the ball is not even at, you know, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of things that a regular spectator wouldn't be looking at. So uh, they don't, they don't get a lot of that stuff on camera most of the time. How much football on TV do you see? I mean, whether it's college or NFL, I mean, because you watch so much film during the week, how much do you actually consume that way? Uh, just a regular TV copy. Yeah. I watch the TV copy every now and then, um, you know, usually, I mean, obviously we play on Sundays, but yesterday I was able to watch a lot of football. So, uh, that was probably the first time in a while I was actually able to watch down and sit game, watch games all day. All right, thanks, Jeremy. Yeah, thank you. That's